Another thing I want to talk about in Ableton, I can't believe I've never talked about this. This is especially for those of you who are new in here, and even some people who are not new to Ableton, this could come in handy. I'm going to take a couple different sounds from Drums at Knock 9, and I just want to show you guys the difference between all the warp modes. I wanted to do this especially for Ableton beginners, and I just wanted to put this out there to explain when to use different warp modes and why to use different warp modes. So in Ableton, there's beats, tones, texture, repitch, complex, and complex pro. That's a lot of warp modes. And by default, Ableton starts up in beats warp mode. So you can change the default behavior. I used to always start Ableton in complex or complex pro, but then what I realized, and the reason why I started in beats is because complex and complex pro actually color the sound, even if you're not doing anything to it. That's something not a lot of people know about, but it's actually in the Ableton manual. So if you're running Complex or Complex Pro, even if you haven't warped anything at all, that's gonna color the sound of your master. Hence why a lot of people say Ableton changes the sound, this and that. It's because of the warp modes. And by default, Complex, Complex Pro changes the sound. So I recommend Beats, Tones, and Texture Repitch. Don't color the sound if you don't do anything, but Complex, Complex Pro definitely colors the sound. So I'm gonna show you guys the different warp modes in Ableton and when to use each one, and also like some dope effects you can get with the different warp modes. I'm gonna load up a drum loop. Let's go to 87, which is the tempo. So this is a drum loop from Drums at Knock 9. If you don't have Drums at Knock 9, what are you doing? Get it. <laughs> I'm just playing. All right. So check it out. It is defaulted to beats mode. You can see down here, if warp is highlighted, you're warping. You can choose what to preserve. So you can do it by bar, half bar, quarter bar, etc., or transients. It's on transients by default. This is the one I like to use for drums. The one with the arrow going forward. So in Ableton, if I slow it down, you notice the pitch isn't changing. If I speed it up, the pitch is not changing. Okay, now listen to the other mode. You can see it doesn't sound as punchy. It sounds like there's stretching at the beginning and at the end of the transients. But if I go to this one, it's a little more punchy. The beginning of the transients are hitting right on. The best way I could describe the other one is it's like kind of blending the transients, and I don't find that works well for drums. So that's the one I choose for drums. And there's this one, which also doesn't sound as good to me. So I prefer this one for drums. Right here, where it says 100, this is a little trick in beats warp mode that sounds good on a lot of sources. At 100, I think of it like 100%. Watch what happens when I turn it down. It's like it affects the release of the sound. So as you turn it down, it cuts off some of the body of the sound, which can sound good for a lot of different things. I showed you a drum loop in Beats Warp Mode. Watch what happens when I get a melody loop in Beats Warp Mode. Something a little smoother. Something like this. Okay, so watch what happens now when I turn down the tempo. So you can hear it's kind of stuttering on some of the parts, which can be cool for certain stuff, but not usually the warp mode I use for melodies. So for this, I like to use either Complex or Complex Pro. Let's use Complex Pro and hear the difference between that and Beats. So how it was before. And now I'm gonna turn the tempo way down. Way smoother. Ableton does a great job with warp modes. I really like the sound of the warp modes. That's Complex Pro and then Complex. Complex. 
Sounds pretty good, but I still like Complex Pro better. Now let's hear beats again. Sounds pretty choppy, but you can also choose to preserve different transients. So it's cutting it in bigger chunks when you choose to preserve different beats. So it doesn't really work too well with melodies, but one thing I like to do, set it to transients, put it to the forward arrow, and you can mess with the melody. If we add more warp markers, If you add warp markers, basically you can get weird effects with it. You guys know about that? That's one trick with melodies that's pretty dope. So like, have fun with that. That's another sound design trick. Super cheat code in Ableton. With the drum loop, I showed you beats mode with the arrow facing forward with the line tends to sound the best, but also with drum loops, Complex and Complex Pro seem to work pretty well. Beats mode, I think, affects the sound the least and keeps the integrity of the transients the best, but Complex and Complex Pro work well also. So you can hear it stretching the transients, which could be cool. It sounds a little phasey to me. You can mess with the formants and the envelope. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's try complex. Dope. So essentially beats is for drum loops. It relies on short transients to manipulate and stretch the loop. Not good for melodic loops. The tones algorithm. Not good on drums. If you're going for a certain kind of effect with melodies, it can be good. It has a warm sound to it, but it's really cutting it up quite a bit. It's a grain style algorithm. So when you mess with grain size, you can get different sounds too. So that's another way to do it. Then there's another one, there's texture. And you can mess with the grain size and the flux. So you get weird results with texture. Again, doesn't sound good on drum loops. I would just pretty much stick to beats for the most part. But you can get some trippy effects with it for sure. See, like you can do that and resample your drums. Like I would do that, freeze it, flatten it, and resample it for some little pockets that you can get from it. And then there's repitch. So repitch works like a turntable, basically. We'll go back to the original tempo. As I turn that down, just repitching it. So the other algorithms don't repitch it. It'll change the tempo, but not repitch it, preserve the pitch. But repitch changes the pitch, changes the tempo and everything. You know, it's a turntable effect. It wouldn't be good with melody if you need to keep it in key. It can be good for stuff like drums or even melody if you don't need to keep it in key. Yeah, repitch is the best for maintaining quality, 100%. Schmogi. So with a melody, this is what it would sound like. Woo! See, that melody sounds good repitched. Depends what you want to do. Essentially, that is all the warp modes. I like different ones for different things. I tend to use beats the most, especially with the drums. With melodic elements, I tend to use Complex Pro or Complex the most. And then if I don't care so much about the pitch, I will use Repitch quite a bit. That's kind of how I approach warping in Ableton. I hope that helps. I know a lot of you already know this, but I just wanted to do this for beginners.